All right, so 302, I think we can get started. We have about 100 people connected. It's a very good crowd. Today's topic, setting up a company in Dubai. My name is Lorenzo. I am the, the, the CEO of Creative Zone. We are the largest business setup company in the UAE. We've been around for 10 years and we have helped over 40,000 entrepreneurs start their businesses and set up their companies here in the UAE and in Dubai. With us, we have an incredible panel of three of our top, more senior team members. We have Paul Prendercast, who is our head of revenue and strategy at Creative Zone. Alistair Payne, who is also one of our top business setup advisors and a, and a business setup manager. And Romel Gams as well, uh, a business setup manager at Creative Zone. Uh, the three of them are the most senior when it comes to advising clients and, and individuals on the procedures and the law on how to set up a company. So we're gonna get right to it, but especially for the, for the crowd, for the people that are sort of listening from outside. Um, the reason many of you are connecting from outside of the UAE is because you are keen to understand a little bit more about how does it work to set up a company in Dubai? What are the benefits of setting up a company in Dubai? Dubai has in the last few years, especially in the last few months even, really become very attractive for a lot of businesses and entrepreneurs to set up their companies. Nowadays, given the whole Corona, COVID situation, people realize that they can set up their companies and operate from anywhere around the world and take the benefits that Dubai represents when it comes to setting up your company. Being a zero tax jurisdiction, the easiness of setting up a company, banking solutions, et cetera. So maybe, Paul, we can start with you. How would you describe to, to the audience, to the 100 people connected, why is it that Dubai is such a preferred place to set up a company? Okay, thanks, Lorenzo. Hello, everyone. I hope you can hear me okay. Uh, welcome. Um, there are actually a, a lot of reasons why Dubai. Um, I'll try and run through as many of them as I can. I think first and foremost, uh, it has to be said, it's a, it's a progressive, well-run country and economy. Um, it's open to almost all nationalities. Uh, you've seen recently the uh, agreements with Israel. You know, it is, it is a very open place and uh, it offers a very warm welcome to everyone. It's a very stable environment um, that gives a lot of certainty and confidence uh, in your setup or anything you'd be looking to do in terms of uh, residency for yourself or your family or your tax situations. And there's a very strong rule of law. Um, it's a very, very safe place to live, a very wonderful place to live. Beyond that, certain jurisdictions, uh, free zone jurisdictions, um, they adopt English common law as a basis of their legal interpretation and ruling, which again brings some certainty to legal documents uh, and the uh, agreements surrounding company setup, although not all of them do so. And, you know, with this trend, you're all connecting from around the world. Um, one of the things that we talk about quite a lot is this idea of a nomad entrepreneur. So you have a choice where you can base yourself within the UAE um, and trade from there internationally all over the world, or you can set up a business here and you can sit in Fiji or Bali or Germany or anywhere you want in the world actually. And it's, and it's really made a very strong effort to cater uh, for everyone in that regard. Um, you can even get a remote working visa now for employees of uh, UAE companies who are operating abroad. Um, I think it has to be said that the both the people in Dubai and the government itself are very entrepreneurial. I mean, they built they built this out of a desert. Uh, they had a plan. Um, they enacted that plan, and you have to say they're very good at it. And they've uh, they've designed this place to appeal to international business, very very much so. Um, and that has brought a large expat community um, who are focused on business, who are focused on opportunities, and there is a buzz about the place. It's it's very very fast paced. Uh, and you know, there's a whole vibe, if I can call it that way, about Dubai, which is about uh, opportunities and you know moving forward. That in itself then brings uh, a lot of access to talent. Both, you know, you have the investors coming here, the large companies coming here, smaller companies, and that is attracting individuals with talent who are looking for opportunities. So it's a very good um, sourcing pool for talent. You know, myself, I used to work in the UK. You know, you'd be based on a on a city-centric basis of nothing like this scale, unless you're talking about one of the major metropolitan cities, you know, you're talking about people from all over the world, all different kinds of skill sets, 
Um, you know, they're, they're promoting tech startups, they're offering specific residents uh, and visas for those with specialist knowledge and research around science. You know, they're, they're, they're picking up the, the, the key macro trends and global trends and looking to encourage uh, those people and those businesses to come to the UAE. Something I suppose is, you know, some of you may be aware that we've been in a pandemic for uh, pretty much the last year. And, you know, the way that the government here um, have managed the COVID situation, I, I'd say is very good. Um, you know, countries like New Zealand and Australia, they've had excellent strategies to control it, uh, but they've also had the benefit of their isolation. And uh, a major international hub, both from a, a, a transit perspective and also from a business perspective, it doesn't really have that opportunity to do that. It, you know, it's not in the business of isolation. It's about opening up. And to, to do that safely, they've put together this program of freeze of vaccination uh, for all residents. And I think at the moment it's 35, 40%, Lorenzo, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and this is funded entirely by the government. So you, again, you know, when they're serious about something they put and they develop these initiatives, uh, they put a lot of will and resource behind it. And it's, I have to say it's working very, very well. So let's say as I look out the window, the, we're not in lockdown, uh, business is functioning and everything's moving forward. Um, as well as gaining residency here uh, via a business setup, there are other options, you know, where they're making it possible to retire here <clears throat> with a retirement visa, provided you meet certain um, savings criteria or property criteria. Um, and, you know, the, <laughs> You know, there really is something for everyone here. You know, no matter what your circumstance, whether you're looking to work, whether you're looking to invest, whether you're looking to retire, whether you're looking to buy property, whether you're looking to base yourself here uh, as an international hub, there are options there for you. And our job is to provide advice and support to you on which of those options is the best for you. Um, some of you may be aware that they opened up recently 100% ownership on mainland companies uh, before that it was only in the professional services arena and now they've opened up 100 percent ownership for uh, certain business activities we're still waiting for complete clarification on that but um i would say we're as as well informed as anyone else in the market if not more so um and really that's again about trying to attract you know big fortune 500 pharma large investment people who don't want to engage in um, the 51% sponsorship. Um, and again, it's about attracting this inward investment, it's bringing opportunity, and then you will have, let's say, tertiary um, opportunities around those large companies as well. Something we'll talk about later, which Lorenzo mentioned before, Saudi Arabia. You know, you, you're literally next door to Saudi Arabia. It's a great place to come, develop your business and access those kind of solutions, which I'll leave to Alistair to touch on uh, later on. Um, and I, I think finally, the, and it's not a small point, it's a great place to live. It's, it's clean, it's safe, it's warm most of the time, uh, and it's very welcoming. It's got great infrastructure and a wonderful education and medical care. So, you know, in terms of options that are out there around the world, I would say, um, Dubai is, yeah, it, it's up there with uh, one of the best, if not the best. Excellent. Thank you for that, Paul. And maybe, Alistair, we can get a little bit more into the details of how do we go about setting up a company? What is your experience when it comes to the foreign, the foreigners, the people from outside that they're saying, how do I go about setting up my company? What is the benefit that I can take? Shall I set up a company in Dubai and continue operating my business outside of, of the UAE, what, what is your experience with the type of clients that you're handling from abroad? Yeah, thank you, Lorenzo, and good afternoon to everyone. Uh, thanks to everyone who, who's tuning in. So yeah, setting up a company in the UAE, the, the best way to go about it um, is definitely speaking with, with Creative Zone. Um, in terms of your t options to set up here, there are over 70 licensing jurisdictions across all seven Emirates here in the UAE. I'd say there's three main types of business set up and there's offshore, free zone, and mainland. Now, which one you're gonna go into is very much dependent on how your business will function, particularly here in the UAE, your on the ground requirements, um, and, and additional things like business activity uh, and, and things like that. Um, but in terms of the experience of the types of clients we work with, 
what we've seen sort of latest trends is a huge influx of people wanting to relocate to the UAE for all of the points Paul's just touched upon. Um, the business environment here is, is one of the best in the world currently. Uh, the weather is fantastic, of course, it's very safe. Um, and operating a business here, really, there's never really been a better time to come and set up here and also relocate here. So I would, to answer that question directly, Lorenzo, I would say what we're dealing with mostly now is, is people m picking up and moving camp, moving away from Europe, moving away from the US for the pandemic challenges and other things that are going on in these countries uh, and relocating to the UA. Excellent. Thank you for that, Alistair. Maybe, uh, Romel, tell us a little bit about, explain the differences between a free zone and a DED mainland company foreigners when they come, what kind of structure is it that they should be looking into setting up? To be honest, it's, um, sorry, hi, hi everyone. And welcome to the webinar. Um, to be honest, when it comes to the sort of trade license you should get, whether it's a free zone license, a mainland trade license, it all depends on what you're looking to do as a business. You know, trading companies definitely are better off with a mainland license because they get the flexibility of owning a warehouse here, having a big showroom office space, um, having a team um, that, that gives a lot more flexibility, bringing in the products, clearing the products themselves. So a lot of trading companies get a lot of benefit from a mainland. Free zone companies um, are more cost effective, um, but have their limitations. Um, so if you send up a consultancy, something of that nature, then a free zone would work perfectly. Um, so again, that's another reason why companies like Creative Zone are here, to offer advice, understand your business requirements, not just try and sell something to you. We offer free zones, we offer every free zone in the UAE, we offer mainland options, and it's all about what you're looking to do. Our job at Creative Zone is to make it easy for you to do business. It's not just about getting the business set up, but it's all about making sure when you have your business set up, it's operating in the right way. You know, you have flexibility to do what you need when it comes to delivering products, when it comes to meeting with clients, getting the bank account open. So it's all about what the client needs as opposed to what is the type of setup needed. What would you say, Romel, still on, on a similar point, what are the steps, the procedures? What is a bit of the timeline? What are the kind of documents that we need to receive from clients in order to go ahead with setting them up in Dubai? In terms of personal documentation, um, the passport, of course, and depending on the scenario, if the person is in the country, then we just need the passport, the visa copy, Emirates ID, if the client's outside of the company, one of the requirements for anyone setting up a company here in the UAE is that they've actually been to the UAE. So we need a passport copy and an entry stamp to the UAE. All of the other documents we will provide. Um, so in terms of personal documentation, that's it. And, and, and the passport photo, that's about all of the documents that you need from uh, an external point of view. Mm. Excellent. We're starting to get a few questions. Uh, I'll advise you please, all of you that have any questions, to put them on, on the Q&A box or in the chat. I can, I, we can try to read some questions uh, from both places. Um, Alistair, going back to what you were saying, we're starting to get a few questions. Which free zone shall I use for setting up my company? I guess, as you were saying, depends a little bit on your activity. What, how can we give a bit more information on, on the different activities? Which, which kind of free zones are, are, are more preferential for clients? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, um, you've already touched on it, Lorenzo. It's very much dependent on business activity. But look, certain free zones here cater to particular industries. There are two regulated financial free zones here. If you have an investment or maybe a holding company activity, then that maybe is a good solution for you. There are free zones dedicated to import and export activities. There are free zones that cater to all the major ports here in the UAE as well. And then there's also free zones which cater to pretty much everything and have a very uh, widespread of activities as well. So which free zone you go into is, is, I'd say, highly dependent on business activity, but also dependent on other requirements as well. Do you need physical space, warehouse or office space? How many visas do you need? Um, and, and, and all sort of things like this. So as I said, over 50 free zones here in the UAE, so there's a huge amount of choice. And by sort of speaking to us, we'll definitely be able to sort of steer you in the right direction uh, based very much on, on your requirements. Excellent. Maybe, Paul, uh, you can give a, a bit of advice. We're getting some uh, good questions coming up. Um, they're asking about costs. What are the usual costs? We have Ramona here asking, what does uh, all of the costs for a small consultancy in a free zone? 
can we guide a little bit on the on the different packages that sort of are in place right now? Sorry, I was on mute. Uh, before I answer that, I, I missed off uh, one of the main benefits of operating in the UAE, which is, of course, uh, zero percent uh, personal and corporation tax. So it was it was so obvious and and so well known. I kind of overlooked it, but it's it's kind of quite relevant as well. Um, yes. Uh, as Alistair said, it really depends what you're looking to do, what kind of business, um, if you're based in free zone or mainland. For uh, The question was specifically free zone, was it, or, or both? Yeah, or in general, what kind of packages do we have? Okay, okay. so for um, if, you, if you don't require a visa and you're just looking for a setup, um, uh, prices there start at around 5,750 dirhams, which is very, very good value. Um, if you're looking for something with a visa, you're talking around 15,000 upwards. Uh, again, depending on your activity, the number of visas that you require, obviously that, that starts to scale. Once you move into the mainland, professional activities, um, packages, mainland activities start at 23,000, uh, commercial around 25 and a half. And um, yeah, it's after that, you're really getting into the substance of what are you trying to do? Are there any external approvals? How will it affect um, the license value and the way that that comes back? So on the one hand, the UAE is very uh, predictable in that how you set up, what you need to do to set up, what is the process, which is where we are experts. And we can also give you advice and support on the activities, putting them in combination, and ultimately what will be the effects on the total package. So we have, package prices, but ultimately we're pulling together a bespoke solution for you. And I don't mean bespoke in the sense that, okay, you know, we'll say it's bespoke and, you know, it's going to become uh, a lot more expensive, but there are some government charges which are levied, which can change. And so we're, we're in the business of letting you know what's involved in that and giving you the appropriate options so you can make the correct choice. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, Alistair, we're getting a lot of questions related on, on whether we would help individuals get all other sort of external approvals, um, other gov de government department authorities like health authority, sports authority. Can you guide clients on, on how is it that we help throughout the entire process? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, as our sort of uh, uh, slogan, so to speak, says, business setup is really only just the beginning for us. It's not just about getting a license from a licensing authority. It's also making sure any external approvals you may need, dependent on your business activity, whether that's to buy a healthcare authority. I've just seen a question there on KHDA, Knowledge Human Development Authority, the sports authorities, et cetera. Credit Zone has extensive experience working with all of these departments. So again, we, we go back to this point on, on business activity. As soon as we understand the scope of the activity, particularly here in the UAE, will be on hand to sort of advise any additional approvals that are required. Now, these approvals sometimes come during licensing. They sometimes come after licensing. Um, you know, it really does vary um, depending on the activity. But of course, we're on hand to guide you through all of this um, and ensure the business is set up correctly, licensed correctly, um, and has any external approvals that it needs. Excellent. There's a good question here from Chris saying, if I'm on my employer's visa, I will still be employed by them. Do I need something like an NOC from them in, uh, or is nothing else required apart from my passport, my visa, Emirates ID? Romel? Yes, if you're, if you're currently employed, then there is a requirement for a no objection certificate. Um, uh, so this will give you the flexibility to set up your own company while working for the current sponsor you're with. Um, some free zones don't require this, um, but it's, it, it's always um, good practice to speak with your employer and let them know you're setting up the company yourself. So yes, NOC is usually required when it comes to setting up a business. Mm, excellent. Alistair, maybe you can help on this one as well. And Paul was talking about this at the beginning. The UAE and, and, and Dubai has introduced a 100% uh, ownership option for foreigners to own a Dubai mainland company. Although this is yet not been put in place, so we don't have the exact directives coming from, from the government. People are asking in this uh, a few questions. Uh, do we know more on this? When is this gonna be full in, full in place? Yeah, absolutely. Look, more and more activities have been added over the years to 
the so-called uh, sort of positive list, should we say, where 100% ownership is possible. Since the me recent media announcements anyway in December, details are still filtering through um, and, and we are sort of awaiting any further updates following those announcements. But what I would say is if your activity is service-based and there's no sort of physical, tangible trade of, of mm -hmm. goods, chances are you can own it 100% now in the mainland. Nearly all the service activities uh, allow for 100% ownership. So to answer the question directly, yeah, again, depending on business activities, but details are still filtering through from those media announcements. And as soon as we have them, uh, those will be distributed um, through our marketing channels. Excellent. I think I'd uh, just add something to that, Lorenzo, as well. You know, I think we've, we've been speaking to a number of um, uh, clients who've been perhaps looking to wait and see how this might develop. You know, is, is my activity going to be covered? You know, do I want to commit to a sponsorship arrangement when it may well be uh, able to go 100%? I think my, the best answer to that is um, I wouldn't wait. Uh, simply because I, d I don't think the amendments are going to be coming through s so thick and fast having made that initial evaluation. And secondly, if you did commit to um, a commercial uh, license with the required sponsorship at the time of renewal, which in the UAE is annual, um, you know, you would, you would have to, I mean, we would be forced to and you would be forced to change that arrangement. Um, and so, you know, it's, I, I would not hold off if any of you were thinking um, you'd like to get that clarified first. Definitely, good, good. Uh, there's a few good questions coming up that I can read and I can answer them myself too. Is this, Gina is asking, is there a waiting period on setting up or is it immediate? Is immediate the minute that you connect with one of the guys here, Romel, Alistair, Paul himself also can help. Uh, they will find the best solution, they will listen to what it works the best in terms of what activity you're looking to do. And it takes uh, a few days to send all the paperwork to the authority. We collect all your documents and within days we will set up your company. So it's, it's quite immediate. Uh, Francis is asking, can someone under spouse visa open and set up a business in Dubai? A hundred percent. And then this will mean that there will be a change of status, correct? Romel, can you explain a little bit more what does it mean a change of status in a visa? So if you're on a spousal visa, um, of course, you're able to set up a company um, and you're out of the company so you can work within that business. There's not necessarily a requirement for a change of status unless you're changing your visa status, right? So as long as you're staying on your spousal visa, you can own the company and that's fine. Um, there's more complications when it comes to being employed if you're on a spousal visa because you need to get a work permit and so forth. Um, but owning a company, um, it's fine. Excellent. Uh, Alistair, we're starting to get a few good questions uh, in regards to banking. Now, what are the procedures when it comes to banking? And let me see if I can find, there was a key question. Here it is. It says, Amna from STR Consultants. She's like asking for advice uh, on physical address, dedicated office address when opening corporate bank accounts. Yeah, absolutely. This is uh, sometimes a requirement, depending on the bank. Look, the, the banks in the UAE, operate slightly differently uh, to the rest of the world. But again, we have very strong relationships with all of the local banks here. We have a department dedicated to managing those banking relationships, which is our concierge department. And if the need is there for a physical office or an agreement uh, showing proof of address, again, it's either something us or the licensing authority can arrange. So yes, banking um, is something we fully assist with. Of course, it's an essential part of any company. Uh, opening a, a local bank account and yeah as I said we work with all the major local banks here and we'd be happy to assist in, in any way possible. Mm. Uh, Paul they're asking about what kind of extra support can we give sort of uh, e-commerce companies now we have that special arrangement with some of our integrated partners where we were linking them up with, uh, with DHL with e-commerce platforms can you tell the viewers a little bit on, more on this project? Yeah, uh, and it's really an extension of, um, let's say, the whole idea of integration partners. You know, we're, we're, we put together an ecosystem. So uh, clients, when they set up their business, they're not obliged to take these services. But if they have a requirement for tax and accounting or legal or marketing, all these things are in place. With a specific regard to the e-commerce license, taking the same approach. Well, what are you going to need? You know, you're probably going to need a logistics partner. Uh, you're probably going to need access to warehousing, or you may 
need and uh, you may want access to uh, online payment solutions you may want access to um, let's say websites specifically catered towards online trading so depending on um, the client themselves their level of confidence and capability either we can put them in touch with partners where they can uh, gain access to discounts uh, and to reputable companies taking out some of the the worry let's say in who they're dealing with or they may have covered 50 percent of it and but they might need an online solution so i mean in that specific regard anything that they might require we can either provide it within the ecosystem or we will certainly know someone who can help them with that definitely good good um romel balal is asking regarding business activities just say you get three business activities what is it what if you choose one activity one activity which is different business in a different industry let's say i have a marketing agency but i also want to do event management can i have two brands and one business license no um so if you were to have of course you can have three different activities depending on what you're looking to do but that is one trade license it's an individual trade license so if you're going to have a separate even website or a separate business require a different trade license. So you could either get a holding company and it can own another trade license, um, similar in the mainland um, or a free zone company when you set up a company here in the UAE. Each license is for one specific activity. You can't have, well, you can have multiple activities, but it has to be for the one trade license and the one company. Mm. Good. Alistair, somebody's asking what type of business activities or ownership type require a local sponsor against uh, a local service agent? Uh, yeah, so I think we, we, we touched on this slightly. So if your activity is professional or service-based, chances are you can own it 100%. And when an expatriate owns a company 100%, that is when there is a requirement to appoint a local agent. If your company is involved in the trade of physical or tangible goods, there is still a legal requirement to appoint a local sponsor who holds a minimum of 51%. Now, Credit Zone have solutions around this. We can act as a sponsor. Uh, we have the ability to be that sponsor, so there's no need to find your own individual. Um, and that could be managed solely by, by us. But to answer the question, the activities that require it, trading activities, definitely. Also, activities that require external approval, things like real estate brokerage. Um, and, and really, mainly all the activities in real estate, you're going to need a sponsor. Uh, and also other things like architecture, engineering, um, these sort of highly skilled activities nearly always need a sponsor. Uh, but if anyone has any questions on activities, I'll put my email into the chat box. Please feel free to, to, to reach out to me directly. Excellent. Um, maybe Romel, the, there's a good question here. It says, how do a business owner know how many visas he's entitled to when setting up a business in the mainland or in a free zone? Yeah, good question. So it varies hugely depending on which free zone you go with and also which package you go with. So different free zones have different amounts and they have different ways of operating. So one free zone may have um, a visa allocation. So you pay a certain amount of money for one visa allocation and you can go up to a certain amount. This may be six, this may be 10. You have other free zones that come as packages. So you might have a one to four visa package, one to six, one to 15. Um, but the free zones do limit at a certain stage. Um, so normally roughly between, I would say, 5 to 15, depending on the free zone. When it comes to mainland, it's all dependent on the size of your location. So for every 80 square foot, you get one visa. Um, so that's dictated by the size of your location. Um, but you can have as many as you need in the mainland up to a certain point. Also, I'll add to that point on mainland that if you go for a co-working license where you don't require an office space, you also um, have a limit to visas. You can get a certain amount of visas, but there is a limitation to it. Yeah, Paul, maybe you can help, uh, help in, in, in shedding a bit more light on that. Francis is asking, can we set up a business without an office space, basically to operate virtually with a global reach? Um, yes, is the quick answer. And the solutions are geared around exactly that. You only, uh, with the solutions that are available in both free zone and mainland, um, you really only need uh, an office space uh, on the old occasion. The vast majority um, can operate with virtual space. Mm. Good, good. Alistair, anything else to add on that, on the issue of 
office space and how does it work with the different licenses? Yeah, I think uh, 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 Paul's touched on it there. It, business activity will sometimes dictate, particularly in the mainland, if you need an office space, there are certain activities where the, you, you must rent one and it's inspected and it has to conform to a certain size. Uh, activities such as restaurant obviously need to have some space behind them as well. Um, and there are other activities as well that sort of fall into this category. So like we sort of keep touching on business activity really does dictate those requirements um, and why selecting the business activity is so important um, because it, it's really going to map out what you are required to do. Um, and again, sort of the value of, of speaking to us first, um, you know, let's clarify that business activity and, and we can plan accordingly. Uh, we're getting a few questions related to people that are in countries where the travel corridor is is currently closed. How do they go out about setting up? How is it? How could they potentially travel? Do they need to travel? Romel, what can we tell uh, people on this topic? Yeah, um, again, um, we keep saying this, but it depends on the option that you go for. Um, so for example, a free zone trade license can be set up when you're outside the country. Um, you will need to come to the country to apply for visas and banking, but this can be, be applied simply from um, abroad because everything is now electronic. Um, and this is the way things were going before COVID, but particularly during COVID, everything's been made a lot easier when it comes to setting up a company. Um, everything can be done online, no need to come to the UAE to set the business up. It's just once you need a visa because of immigration um, and that sort of thing is when you need to come over. Um, in the mainland, um, you have to be here to sign at the notary. Um, so you will have to come into the country to, to set the trade license up, but that's only once you're finalizing the process. So you can start, but you can't finish the process with a mainland license. Mm. Uh, another important news, and I can see a, a couple of people are asking on this, was the issue of the announcement of the UAE announcing the, the new citizenship law where they are looking at uh, changing the law when it comes to allowing uh, certain uh, you know, investors, I think it's artists, people in sports, um, to be allowed to eventually get a citizenship. I understand that the details of this haven't been sort of put forward yet, but the idea and the introduction to the concept is there. Alistair, anything else that we can add on this topic? Yeah, it's, it's a very exciting announcement, but to be honest, it's sort of following the trend that, um, that the UA government is setting here. They are making staying living here on a longer term much more easier, and it's another step in that direction. Um, so it's a very exciting announcement. Um, and I also saw a, a poll the other day, the UA passport is, is, I think, the most strongest in the world right now. Um, which adds even more incentive to people to come here and invest into the country and potentially, you know, obtain citizenship. But as you correctly said, Lorenzo, the details are still coming through. It's a very new announcement, but also a very exciting one. Uh, guys, we're getting so many questions. I'm trying to read as much as, as, as we can and try to make it as relatable as possible. Um, all of the questions will be answered. We're going to send an email back to everybody uh, with, your, with your answers but keep them coming. Maybe I'll encourage the team also to put your email addresses there on the, on the chat uh, group so that people can read your emails and eventually get in contact with you to ask you more questions, to potentially engage with you in setting up a company. Um, another good question here, uh, how long does Creative Zone act as a sponsor? Alistair? Uh, it's actually up to you. We, we, we can be there for the lifetime um, or, or we can be there for a, as little as, as one year. We're completely flexible. This is one of the biggest benefits of our corporate sponsorship. We give the beneficial owner full control. You have full authority to say when you don't want Credit Zone or you do want Credit Zone to continue as a sponsor. So to answer that question, it's, it's completely up to you. We, we will be there for the lifetime of the company if needs be, and, and we can also be there, you know, only for a year. Um, so the 49% the shareholder has full control and full flexibility in that regard. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Paul, maybe let's I discuss, I um, yeah, yeah, go ahead. I think um, it's, it's an understandable question, actually, and one that we get a lot. Um, I think it's important to remember that, you know, our business model works on, um, if you like, the repeat business, the renewal. And people will only want to stay with us providing we're providing 
good support, good customer service at um, a price point that represents good value for money. So, you know, we, we gear our business around, um, let's say, a mid-market pricing level. You know, we're not the cheapest. We don't want to be. I make no apologies for that. Uh, and neither are we sort of a top end. But the products that we provide are top end. Um, so I, my comment to that would also be, um, you know, why would you want to leave? If you look at our Google reviews, you know, it's uh, 4.8 out, out of 5 over a, a large sample, which is completely uncurated. Uh, the good, the bad, the ugly, it's all in there. Um, and we make every effort to uh, look after our customers so they don't want to move. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Uh, Romel, another good question is saying, uh, is it possible to start up a new construction company and start doing business with the government? Yes, the answer to that question is yes. Of course, you can set up a construction company here. There are some requirements that come with a construction company. Um, that of course, it's going to have to be a mainland license because you'll be operating in the mainland, but also not just the individual who's setting up the company as, say, for instance, an expat has to have certain qualifications, but so does the sponsor. Um, so it, 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 it's a little bit more complicated process and you have, you have to find someone who matches the requirements, but this can be done and we've done it many times before. So the answer to that question is yes, you, you can you can set up a construction company and work with whoever you like to. Excellent. Sorry, I'm bouncing around between topics here because I'm trying to connect them as much as possible. But Fares is asking a good question. Alistair, do you provide virtual offices for the licensing and operations? Uh, yes, we do. Um, we have various uh, virtual office solutions, both on our free zone and our mainland products. We also have physical office solutions as well. We own a business center in downtown Dubai. We also work with many other business centers throughout the city as well. So office options are plenty, um, whether it's virtual, physical, um, we, we have something for everyone. So yeah, Faris, please do get in touch. Good, good. Uh, Edu360 is asking, uh, what are the drawbacks, disadvantages of setting up a company in a free zone, Romel? I think it's not so much drawback, drawbacks, it's more the positives of having a mainland company um, and depending on what your company is looking to do. For instance, um, a free zone company can only operate in the free zone, whereas a mainland license has the flexibility to not only have an office space in any jurisdiction, well, any, anywhere in the UAE, but also can deliver their products, can have a shop, can have a store. Um, when it comes to any type is when it comes to banking, it's also beneficial to have a mainland license. So it's not so much drawbacks for a free zone, it's more limitations if you're operating in a certain manner. And that again, it goes back to the fact of understanding what your business is looking to do, understanding what you need to do, and if you're required to have a mainland license or if a free zone license will suffice for you. Good, good. Uh, we have a few complex questions related, uh, Alistair, that relate more to more complex setups like, uh, a holding company owning a 100% local uh, local DED company, this being a RAC ICC type of structure, you have a lot of experience in setting up these kind of holding structures. What can you tell people on, on the options with ADGM and some of the work that we do on this front? Yeah, absolutely. One of the main business setup options here in the UAE is to set up an offshore company and structure that, um, have that owning your main operational company. And it's something that we have a lot of experience with. Um, so absolutely, we can assist. We've opened an office in Abu Dhabi Global Market. It's one of the newest uh, offshore free zones here in the UAE. It's a regulated financial free zone. And we've even created a separate division of the credit zone group to also cater to these uh, types of inquiries as well. So absolutely, there are various structuring options one can look at if you're looking to have a mainland license owned by one of these offshore free zone companies. Main benefits are these offshore free zones are usually governed by either international or English and Welsh common law, which protects the expatriate investor from the local civil Sharia laws, allows you to ring fence assets, protect yourself against liabilities, um, and, and yeah, it's, it's a very good structural solution. So I'd be happy to take any questions or, or, or anything at all on this point, and I'll pop my email again in the, in the chat box. Good, good. Paul, um, what about the rest of our integrated partners, tax and accounting solutions, and um, 
how we help people with their PRO, visa for dependents, uh, Emirates ID. What, what are the other services that we can help with? Uh, I actually have to refer to a list of so many. So uh, we started off, you know, really looking at what clients need, as I, as I said before, you know, at, a, at the most fundamental level, you know, you're operating a business, uh, you're going to need a bank account. So, you know, you have concierge elements who assist you with that. And just on that point, by the way, that when the guys are talking to you about the uh, activity of your business, they already have one eye on what will be the impact on how you open your bank account. You know, we're not in the business of, uh, just listening to you say you want a certain activity, we will advise you if you know what is the best way to do it to support your bank account opening. So we have aspects like uh, the bank account opening, yes, dependent visas, made visas, attestation, tax certificates, uh, a whole host of ad hoc services. Uh, we can also offer um, PRO services, uh, perhaps rather than engaging a PRO yourself as your business grows, you know, you can take advantage of our scale and depth of knowledge and uh, work with us for all your um, PRO work. And then beyond that, you know, we, we engage with all kinds of um, different uh, business activities and types of clients and nationalities. And over the years, we've developed uh, a range of integration partners who are either within our group uh, or we have uh, very, very close affiliations with. And as I mentioned before, that's about giving you confidence when you're entering a new market you don't know who's who you know you're, you're it's going to take a lot of legwork to do that evaluation you know who can you trust um and so we put we put a lot of effort into this and as you mentioned there's tax and accounting services which is everything from audit economic substance requirements vat uh, or just let's say bookkeeping uh, to the extent that you need and there's packages tailored around that then you have everything from um you know, investment, funding, um, incubator kind of arrangements. Then you have arrangements with companies like DHL, with Teller, uh, with marketing companies, digital marketing companies, warehousing uh, providers. Uh, you, we can gain you access to interns, uh, which in the short term uh, avoids the need for visas. And so it's a very cost effective way to access young talent. Um, you know, there are investment funding, I mean, it really goes on and on. And I think one of the key ones though, as well is on a mainland license, we have a unique product. We can give you up to uh, eight visas, two, two investor visas, six employee visas. As you need to scale beyond that, we can provide solutions for you as well through uh, one of our partners, um, which is a manpower company. And as you're within our group, that can become a very cost-effective way to do it. So what I would encourage people to do, um, we will post some things, Ishan, if you'd put the, um, uh, the list on there and also the link to the website, uh, where is the, there is the complete list, but it is extensive. And as I said, you're not obliged to engage any of these. It really is on a need basis. Yeah, good idea, Paul. Maybe, Ishan, if you can pull out the link of our website to the integrated partners and the extended services, that will help a lot. Uh, Alistair, we, we said that we we're going to mention what it is and how it is that we help uh, people in setting up their Saudi entities and to go and operate in Saudi Arabia. What has been your experience with this so far? Uh, what are the procedures on setting up in Saudi? Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a very exciting time in, in Saudi Arabia. There is lots of change happening within the kingdom. I think that's set for, for a very big year. Um, we've been operating now um, just over a year in, in Saudi Arabia and the business setup options are similar in some ways to the UAE, but they're also very different. Uh, but both our team here and our team in Riyadh, where we're based, will be on hand to assist any entrepreneur or, or organization which is looking to extend into Saudi. Um, there are various license option, uh, licensing options you can look at. Um, the Ministry of Investment of Saudi Arabia uh, license all foreign nationals. Um, who wish to set up a business in the kingdom. There are fairly extensive requirements to set up under the Ministry of Investment. Uh, but, but again, it, it's going very well for us in Saudi Arabia. We're very busy. Lots of change, lots of positive change in the kingdom as well. And anyone who's, who's even thinking about it, please do get in touch. It's not as difficult as you think. Um, and, and we'll make it that much easier as well. Excellent. Uh, Romel, somebody was asking 
Does Romel and Alistair have different profiles of the type of companies they set up? Is one more focused on mainland or on a free zone? How do we work in terms of them getting in touch with you? Yeah, so we do. So from my point of view, I look after the free zone team. Um, we both have experience in mainland and free zone, so we can help you on any option. But Alistair takes care more of the mainland team and I take care more of the free zone team. Um, but like I said, all of our team are experienced in all options, so they, they can assist you wherever you need to go. Um, so reach out to both of us and we can, we can both direct you in the right direction. Excellent. Well, I'm picking up, uh, there's really so many questions and I, I encourage everybody to, to reach out to, to the guys, to Romel, Alistair and Paul individually on their emails. Um, somebody else asking similar, how, much does, how long does it take to start a business in Dubai? Alistair, can you give us some ideas on the timings? Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it varies per license jurisdiction. I would say in your free zones, your incorporation time is a little bit quicker. Generally in the free zones, we're looking around four to five working days and really the business is set up. If we look in the mainland, that is extended a little bit. You're looking in and around two weeks. Um, again, depending on business activity, external approvals that are required and et cetera. So yeah, anywhere from as quick as four days to two weeks um, to, to set up here and it, and it varies per, per license jurisdiction. Excellent. All right. Um, well, I think we're slowly reaching the end of, of today's session. I will read a few more questions. If anybody has a few good questions, I'm trying to read in between. We've answered quite a few of them. I can see that the, the link of integrated partners is being included. Um, they're talking, they're asking quite a bit of our consultancy services, Romel, and whether this needs a local sponsor, what would be the best jurisdiction for a consultancy type of company, Romel? Yeah, so when it comes to consultancy, whether it be in a mainland, any free zone, there's no requirement for a local sponsor. So you'll own the company 100%. Um, you'll just need the local service agent if it's a mainland and in free zone, there's no local service agent involved. Um, so again, going back to the professional activities. Um, and to be honest, a consultancy, depending on what you're consulting on, um, uh, could be more suitable in a free zone or in a mainland. Um, it's a very flexible activity, right? So a lot of the free zones will offer that. Um, but there's no requirement for a, um, a local individual being involved in the business to become a shareholder. Mm. I think so, a lot of them have, um, specific, sorry, Lorenzo, I think a lot of the, um, uh, the, the free zones now are offering, um, let's say, specific consulting activities. Um, one of the trends now in the banking, you know, the compliance steps are tighter. Um, one of the ways that we would advise, advise you is to be as specific as you can in your consulting activity rather than leave things general. Uh, banks tend not to like things general. Um, so again, as part of your setup, we can help you, help guide you towards the correct combination of activities to really get you set up as quickly as possible. Definitely. Paul Vijay is asking if you could please provide your email address on the chat. Uh, apparently we have some people that would like to connect with you. And uh, somebody, TY was asking or was saying that we mentioned the issues of the vaccine during the introduction and whether it's included in the packages. It's not, it's not that we're including a vaccine within setting up a company. What we were trying to explain is that because you're setting up a company are potentially becoming a UAE resident, like any other resident of the UAE, you are eligible to go and get the vaccine. And we've seen this happen in the last couple of months. We've seen a lot of people visiting Dubai and being here while this period, and they, many of them extended their stay. And this is where they started to explore and say, you know, we like the place, we wanna set up here, we wanna set up a company. So they set up a company, they became a resident mm -hmm. and they have access to, to getting the vaccine done. I, 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 can, I know that in some countries, there are some delays when it comes to this. So these are some of the other benefits that we can see that the government of Dubai have become very, very, very fast and implementing some of these policies. And it's, it's why it's making Dubai such an attractive place nowadays to do business. Yeah. Um, maybe Paul, as we start rounding things up, what would you say, why Creative Zone? Why should people come and engage with us? What is that value add that we have 
to give as a company. But, okay. Um, I think it's that point, first and foremost, that I mentioned before. Um, it's, it's value for money. You know, we, we're offering first-class products. We have unique mainland uh, products. No one else in the, the market is offering uh, an equivalent. Um, and the service that we offer, I would say, is second to none. Why? You know, it's the business is 10 years old now. When um, the, the founding uh, shareholders started this business, you know, they were directly active at the sharp end, talking to customers, and they, they did it to provide a higher level of service than was currently available at that time from the jurisdictions. And as, as time has gone on, that experience and knowledge has been retained and deepened. And when you couple that with um, a low turnover of staff and investment in staff um, and uh, the generation of some scale that can cope with both, let's say be attentive to individual clients, but still do things in a very slick way you know, you get, you get tremendous value for money there. You know, you, there's a, you can look online, there's very many providers, some of whom are one, two, three man bands, and they don't make the same investment. Um, mm. So I, first and foremost, I'd say value for money. Easy for us to say, um, look at the Google reviews. That, you know, like, like I said before, we cannot change them. Uh, anything good and bad is there, and it's overwhelmingly good. And that is our uh, primary concern. So that customer centricity starts, you know, as soon as you're talking to an advisor, um, you know, the, the guy's first question is, please talk me through your business activity. What's your time frame? Are there any specific challenges that you're worried about? Um, are you looking to have any visas? Are you looking to move your family? You know, and they really get a sense of the whole. It's very, very straightforward to say, okay, you're asking me for this. I'll sell you that. And that, that's not the business that we're in. We, we want something that not only works for you now, but by understanding how your business will scale, continues to work for you in the years, uh, the years ahead. Um, we're transparent in our, in our cost. You know, it can be complicated sometimes. We've discussed a lot of the approvals that can exist, what kind of sponsors you have to have. Is it individual or is it corporate? Um, there's so many elements there. And it can be very, very difficult in this market to generate or receive quotes from providers and try and make sense of a like for like basis. Our approach is that as we walk through this, <clears throat> we're very, very transparent about what are our costs, what are the government fees and what you can expect for that fee. So we, we're very, very clear on the scope of services and you do not have surprises. It doesn't happen. Um, and that transparency, I think, is very, very important. It's, it's already a big deal starting a business. You know, it's, you're entering a new phase in your life. You're probably operating on a budget. You want to be very clear about what it is you're getting into. And uh, speaking as someone who went, went through it uh, and didn't receive that, um, that same level of transparency, uh, I think that, that counts for a lot. Um, we have a, a very, very strong international focus. We have over, uh, I think, 250 staff within the group. I think we're collectively speaking over 40 different languages. Uh, in our sales team alone, you know, we're, I think we're probably able to talk at least 20 languages. Um, and that, again, is mirrored through the operations side, into the account management side, customer service side. Um, and so, you know, we, we, we recognize and we are looking to mirror the makeup of the UAE, which is genuinely international. Um, I think the ease of setup, um, on the one hand, it can be a little bit complicated, but our job is to make it very, very easy. You know, a lot of people coming to this area don't know what's involved. You're hunting around for information and you want to have some clarity about what's going on. And mm. as much as possible, we're being uh, very open and clear about what your timescales are, what the costs are, what you need to do when, and as much as possible, we will take care of the administration, whether that's pre-setup or post-license, as you wanna make amendments, uh, as you want to add shareholders, as you, as you want to add employees or whatever it is, we can take care of those things for you. You don't need to be experts. You need to be experts in your own business. And so the idea is that you let us take care of that um, at, uh, at a price point that you know, is fair and is good value for money. Um, there's a strong community element within Creative Zone. We have um, 
CZ Connect, where all CZ clients can gather together. They can they can talk about their products. They can pitch to one another. Um, they can share experience uh, and act as a collective and gain advantages as a collective. In addition to all the other discounts that are available as a CZ client, and they're not only available on startup if you choose them at that point. Once you're a CZ client, you can take advantage of all those uh, discounts uh, and even some very interesting ones uh, that everyone requires such as insurance and so on you can gain some um, quite attractive discounts there with our partners there i mentioned the experience um you know we do have a low staff turnover there is a strong commitment to value not only for you as clients um but you know a recognition of experience and the knowledge of staff and so you know they make every the, the management here make every effort to look after those key staff all that knowledge is retained and that is uh, that translates as a fast, efficient, knowledgeable and painless setup that provides something for you that works going forward. Um, and I think the, the last one is that we genuinely walk the walk. I started with the Google reviews. I'll go back to it. You know, it, it's very, very easy to, to sit here and blah, blah and say we're the best. Um, our, our clients are saying it. Over, you know, 75%, actually 80% of our clients renew with us. Of those that don't renew, it's either because their business hasn't done well or their own circumstances uh, has meant that they're meant to leave the um, UAE. So I think, you know, I mentioned our model relies on that renewal because we deliver good service. And I think, you know, we walk the walk there. Uh, so please check it out. And I won't say it again, um, but it, I think it's, it, it says what we can't. Good, good. A few good points there, Paul. Thank you for that. And um, a few questions that relate to that. Maybe Alistair, you can help on that. It says, oops, just a question moved. One second, let me find it again as I was about to read it. Um, does Creative Zone take care of the compliance side of things post incorporation of the company? Alistair? Uh, yes, we do. Um, we, of, of course, setting up, um, we, we make sure all the compliance boxes are ticked. We also offer sort of corporate secretarial services through our tax and accounting team or through our offshore team as well. Um, and things like ESR and ongoing compliance requirements such as this can be catered to, um, you know, either through us or through our tax and accounting department or our offshore department as well. So absolutely, we take care of it um, from the minute the business is set up throughout the lifetime. Good, good. All right, guys, it's 3.59. I think we have one minute left for today. Romel, what would be some of your final words to conclude today's session as a message to the people that are here that are potentially looking at setting up a company in Dubai? You're on mute. <laughs> Took this long to get one of those muted discussions. Um, when it comes to setting up a company, because there are so many people internationally here, um, just understanding what Dubai has to offer, not just from a business perspective, um, but also from a lifestyle perspective, you know, the opportunities that are here. Um, we talk a lot about, obviously, vaccines and that sort of things. This is something that the country is doing for everyone. Everyone who lives in the country who has a visa here gets a free, visa, um, a free vaccine. So this is something that is part of everywhere developing, trying to get out of this situation, you know, and, and Dubai is very quick to act when it comes to these sort of things. Um, and when it comes to setting up a business, I think the main focus for anyone setting up business is to focus on their business. So coming to someone like Creative Zone, who has the experience, who has the knowledge, the expertise in the market, and can assist you in all angles, um, it just makes your life a lot easier. Um, so Dubai is a place to come and do business. Like Paul mentioned, you've got the sunshine, you've got the lifestyle, um, and the opportunity. Um, so yeah, any other questions that you have, feel free to reach out and we can assist you with anything you need. Excellent. Alistair, your final word, words? Yeah, I think uh, Paul Rommel summed it up uh, brilliantly. What I would say is there has never been a better time to come and relocate to the UAE or set up your business in the UAE. Licensing rates are as competitive as they've ever been. Barriers to entry are as low as they've ever been. Now is really the time. And I remember on our last webinar four or five months ago, we said the same thing. Um, so I would implore anyone who has, who's, who's, sort of tinkering with the thought of, of relocating or, or moving their business here to the UAE, please get in touch with us. Every consultation is free. 
you you will always get through to one of our experts and we we'd, we're always on hand to sort of advise even if it's not now and you're going to move once the pandemic has, has settled down a bit more um you know we're always here to sort of answer questions and, and guide you along the way but but absolutely i thank everyone for, for attending and, and look forward to hearing you and hopefully seeing you in the uae soon definitely thank you guys so much thank you to all the attendees we had 150 people connected all our emails are there. My email is lorenzo at creativezone.ae. Romel, you have it on the screen. Romel at creativezone.ae and Alistair at creativezone.ae and Paul the same. Paul at. Uh, Paul is not Paul. Paul's different. Yeah. We, we look forward to engaging with all of you. Um, uh, thank you for connecting. And uh, any queries, anything that you would like to learn more, please get in touch with us. And we look forward to, uh, to, to, to working with you. We will be sending a full link to everybody with this, the, this webinar. Thanks again. See you all soon. Thank you, guys. Bye Take bye. care. Thanks for Thank that. You. Bye.